So today, um, as part of a project to uh, introduce more of Water Street Studios resident artists and um, to, give, to give them more visibility um, on who they are as artists, um, something about their practice, um, how they be first became artists. Um, this is the second of what I'm hoping is going to be, you know, a uh, representation of all the uh, Water Street Studio uh, resident artists. But um, today we have Kevin Hunter, who um, a resident artist as well as an instructor um, at Water Street and also at Aurora University. Um, but I think, you know, I've, I've got a few questions here, but we'll just start off with the first one, which is, um, when did you know that you had artistic talent? Um, when did you decide that, yes, I am an artist, I'm going to go for this? You can just take it from there. Yeah, sure. Um, there's two, I think, probably two answers to that. Um, the, the simple one is about six years old, mm -hmm. and I knew I wanted to be an artist at about that age. Mm -hmm. um, the flip side of that coin is I don't think that I'm particularly talented. I think, um, and 20 years of teaching has kind of convinced me that eh, maybe there isn't such a thing as talent, that we're, some of us just drew when we were kids. Some of us took music and, mm -hmm. and so on. Um, I was lucky. I, there were artists in my family and I had a lot of support. Mm -hmm. So I was pretty much of an introvert as a little kid so I spent like tons of time drawing so I got good feedback from it and I you know if, if there is some inherent thing involved it's probably a matter of tenacity when I was a kid and something didn't work out in my drawings I didn't go all the heck with it mm -hmm. you know, I stuck with it and tried to tried to figure it out puzzle it out what was mm -hmm. going on mm -hmm. So when you were six, though, so you said you were drawing, but, um, you know, when did you discover painting? Um, and, and also, you know, so you're six, I mean, that's an ex incredibly young age. Um, did you have formal education? Did you, um, I mean, did you, like, you know, the first opportunity that where you could take art classes, was it um, through, you know, um, the school that you went to? Did you go to a special school? Like, how did that happen? How did that evolve? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, actually, it was at about the same time for painting. Um, my grandmother was a fairly good watercolorist. And mm -hmm. so when I spent time at their house, she'd bring out these great mm -hmm. European watercolors and little yeah. lead tubes. And she'd set up still lifes for me and, and I'd paint it and she'd knock them down, reset it up. Okay. Um, so along with that, it, it's not like it was um, instruction, mm -hmm. but she she threw out these little tidbits that even today I still use. Yeah, such things as? Like, things like using complementary colors to tone mm -hmm. down um, other colors. Mm -hmm. and, um, so some more so, of the formal techniques then that you would learn in, in a... Um, some of them, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, otherwise, it was just straight through high school. I had a really good teacher that taught us to draw mm -hmm. um, pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, and so then I went on to University of Illinois to study medical illustration. Mm -hmm. And that's a five-year program for a bachelor's, or it was back then anyhow. Mm -hmm. Back then was an interesting time because there weren't any clear-cut roads to being an artist. <clears throat> there was one that I knew of, um, and I found out about this later. All the big illustrators at that time had their own shops. Hmm. And they would hire artists very much like they did in the Renaissance mm -hmm. to work with that shop. And then you worked mm -hmm. your way up and um, eventually became a, an right. illustrator yourself. Right. right. The, the guild system. and yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. I did, I, Which I would be great if we still had that system today. It really would. I mean, we it would. would. And, and we do in some areas, mm -hmm. you know, there, in most of the major cities do have ateliers at least. Okay. Right. Um, that, that kind of worked that way. Mm -hmm. um, but I had no idea where to find that when I was a kid. We, we mm -hmm. weren't very, what's the word? We weren't a very worldly family and I was mm -hmm. a pretty naive kid. So mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I didn't really get any formal instruction until really I was doing my master's work. Mm -hmm. um, anyhow, I was enrolled as a, as a medical illustration student five-year program, two years of which needed to be done in med school. And mm -hmm. I 
decided, you know what, I don't want to live in Chicago, don't want to do med school with med students. Mm -hmm. Um, so I took the degree in political science and then just went right out and got a job <laughs> as an illustrator, <laughs> a corporate illustrator. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so I had a, a career in corporate illustration and art direction, um, but painted all along. Mm -hmm. And it really wasn't until I started teaching mm -hmm. that I got formal training because um, I was working on my master's and I didn't get it there. I was so bummed out that I wasn't getting it in my master's that yeah. <laughs> um, I did some hunting around and discovered palette and chisel in Chicago. Okay. And that's a hundred year old institution. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the world's great artists right now came out of there. Uh, so I really did get good formal training in, in portrait and still life painting there. Wonderful. Um, but this is all, you know, this has been going on my whole life. So. Right. Yeah. No, it sounds like it. I don't, I don't think I knew that. Um, yeah. So, but so now you're, you're teaching and you're teaching predominantly painting, right? It just, uh, uh, at Water Street, uh, I teach oh, okay. a bit of painting and drawing. Okay. At Aurora, I just, I teach drawing and I teach graphic design. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, well, I think the next one, you know, is, is pretty relevant. Um, actually we can skip over that because it's, how did you learn how to draw or paint? We just covered that. Um, right. so we'll go into this next one. So, so what art form are you most passionate about? And, um, it seems like you've kind of stuck with the in 2D, you know, so the drawing and the painting. Is there anything else that you explored or is that pretty much it for you? Oh, man, in college, my, my first year down at U of I, mm -hmm. I had two outstanding sculpture teachers and I hung mm -hmm. around out at the graduate art studio with, um, I, think his, I think his first name was Frank, Frank Gallo. Mm -hmm. uh, was down there at that time and he was a huge influence over everybody in america mm -hmm. he was working in in epoxy resin mm -hmm. so yeah my freshman year of college i wanted like crazy to switch my major over to sculpture <laughs> and they wouldn't let me i don't know if they saw that i didn't have it um i i wanted to switch in order to teach and they told me at that time in america that um that teaching wouldn't be a promising career for some of us so mm -hmm. um, i took their advice and didn't do it but yeah i was really mm -hmm. turned on to sculpture for a while hmm. that's and interesting the, the, because like uh, welding and stuff it was yeah. um, it was clay sculpting got it okay. and and um resin casting okay and and the subject matter um you know most um, of your paintings are, are landscapes or there's portrait work um but did you um, figure too okay okay all right cool i didn't know that so all right um next one um process process is a huge thing for artists you know we all have a different process how we approach things and obviously depending on the medium um you know do you have a very specific process is it sort of you know um formulaic or is it is it just something that you like for example i don't my my process is all over the place. It really depends on what it is that I that I'm wanting to say at the time. But go ahead. Um, yeah, I have two pretty specific processes that mm -hmm. I follow, mm -hmm. uh, and <laughs> it depends on how oddly enough I'm breathing at the time. <laughs> um, at palette and chisel, I learned to paint in the Dutch tradition, so mm -hmm. the 17th century Dutch tradition. Mm -hmm. That would be like this behind me, mm -hmm. where it's a meticulous um layering of very thin layers of paint that build up in in your lights mm -hmm. and stay thin in your darks um that requires some solvents and and maybe some varnishes mm -hmm. to do that um over the years have given me considerable lung damage so when i'm in enclosed spaces mm -hmm. i can't really use that process mm -hmm. now currently during this whole virus thing, I'm painting in my garage and that has good ventilation. Good. So I'm back to working that process where mm -hmm. I'll show this one that's in progress. Oh, that's gorgeous. You start with wow. really thin brown washes. Mm -hmm. You just build up very, very slowly, mm -hmm. wherever possible, leaving the darks thin. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that, that was the clue to the Dutch's 
ability to make their paintings absolutely glow like that. <clears throat> so there's that, and this one was painted much the same way. Mm -hmm. The other one is it's just the standard process that uh, just tons of people use. Um, its formal name is a la prima, meaning all in one go. And that's where you kind of do the same thing, but in one city. Okay, you usually don't take it much farther than, than mm -hmm. one city. Mm -hmm. So this would be a portrait done that way. This would be um, a landscape done that way. So I, I don't really have a preference. Like I said, I, I like painting both ways. I, I'm, I probably favor the more immediate one, the a la prima more so than, um, than um, the Dutch way, but I do adore the Dutch way as well. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can. Okay. <clears throat> well, good. Um, let's see. I think I got a couple more. Um, so you actually you're 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 going into you've actually covered a lot of these questions already. Um, I think probably the the one that um, you know everyone is dealing with now is you know there's always challenges as an artist as a working artist to begin with. Um, however, now you know we're we're faced with um, challenges that that are, that were unforeseen. Um, so I mean you can talk about either one or both or combined or how, however you would like to approach it. But, um, you know, I mean, what, so what, are, what are the major challenges that you really have? Um, and, and it could be not just being able to market and sell your work, but also challenges that you have as an artist, um, you know, coming up with subject matter, coming up with something that you want to say and how you say it, or it could be, you know, all those things combined with um, the challenges that we have now with this pandemic. Sure. Um, I think probably the challenges that I've faced over the past year has been more a matter of, um, I don't, I don't, I think it was Michelangelo maybe who, who said, or maybe Vasari and speaking about Michelangelo that if, um, if your mind isn't clear, you're not going to be able to work. Mm -hmm as an artist. Mm -hmm. Now I'll pose that to Chuck Close who said, inspiration is for amateurs, the rest of us just show up, <laughs> <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I tend to, when I don't have an inspiration eating at me, mm -hmm. I tend to be pretty lazy. I'll work hard, but I don't enjoy the work. Mm -hmm. um, and especially, um, you know, the, the breathing issue, I paint outdoors all summer long, and a lot of times I'm standing in stuff that I'm dreadfully allergic to. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that makes it rough, and, and then, you know, the solvents and junk too. So right. I, I would say my biggest personal challenge is is probably staying healthy enough in those little aspects mm -hmm. to be able to feel good enough about something to actually want to come in and paint it. Mm -hmm. Right now, as far as during the pandemic goes, I don't, I wouldn't say that's affecting me. It's it's in in an adverse way. It's actually giving me time. I'm in the middle of a book about Rembrandt um, <clears throat> and and Rubens, mm -hmm. and it's actually inspiring me a whole lot. Wonderful. I'm getting out to the garage and painting every day. Right. So that's a good thing. That's good to hear. But um, like you said, you brought up marketing. Oh, that's always the challenge, I think, for everybody. It is. It is. And how we do it. And, and it's changed so much, too. I mean, everything is shifted to online. And, you know, we, we were going that way anyway. And, and, and even more so now, um, you know, where we can't physically go into a gallery or physically, you know, go into, um, you know, or with Water Street, you know, our shows have been shut down. We've had to switch them to virtual. And it really changes um, how we view art, you know. And, and, and I always was really frustrated by this, this shift to move um, all of our artwork to a tiny little screen and then even a smaller image to show your work was incredibly frustrating to me because you just don't get the same um, experience. And um, to try and sell your work that way always seemed very frustrating. You know, I was very, I've always been very frustrated by that too. Yeah, you're so right. Um, I'll give you a perfect example of that too. Mm -hmm. Whatever you think of Norman Rockwell's work, 
you get in front of one of the those that man's paintings mm -hmm. and you can see what a master he was and that doesn't translate to his prints no um so so yeah it's true standing in front of a work is an entirely different experience mm -hmm. yeah especially i mean because because scale is such a huge part of it you know i mean what when, and when you even if you list you know the size of the piece you st it's unless you can measure it out on your wall or visually um be able to to get there it's it's you you can't it's 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 just does not do it justice it's a very difficult thing so yeah i don't think that um maybe there's some people that can do it but mm -hmm. when i stand in front of a, a piece of a work at, at say the art institute or elsewhere mm -hmm. I'm able to open myself up to the experience of it in a way I can't do on a screen. Right. You know, it, it's a different way of looking. It's looking mm -hmm. with your feelings mm -hmm. um, instead of your eyes so much. Right. And I'm, I can't do that on this. Right. Um, yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it, they're filters, <clears throat> you know, and how many filters are we looking through? You know, so we've yeah. got we've got one where it's the camera taking a photo of the actual work, and then we've got another one which is our um, well, it could be multiple, three or four, depending on how many times it's been um, put through a filter. You know, so it's sure. I, I put everything. I number one, I shoot it on a camera. Mm -hmm. Number two, I put it through an image process it mm -hmm. in Photoshop, mm -hmm. try to make it as close as possible. Right. Number three, it's turned into a JPEG and uploaded. Mm -hmm. Or it gets compressed and, yep. right. And whatever platform is displaying it is going to mm -hmm. affect it as well. So, yep, yep. absolutely. Right. We, get, we get several steps removed from the real deal. Yeah, I know. And, and I've been researching, um, so a lot of, a lot of galleries since we are having, you know, to shift online, um, and then, you know, even before the pandemic, um, so what, you know, there's all kinds of new software out there where it's virtual reality, 3D virtual reality, which I think is improving a little bit, but it's still, it's just, it's just not the same. And so I'm wondering, you know, um, I'm wondering what the next move is going to be, you know, will we, will we just reject it and go back to viewing in person, you know, as much as we can, you know, and this is pandemic aside, you know, but, um, I don't know. You know, I think I don't it, know either. I think it depends somewhat on how how we we how we live after this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, one way of looking at this could be that everything will go digital. Right. You know, I'm sure there are people that instead of paintings in their home have screens mount flat screens mounted on their walls that display turning paintings. You know, I'm I'm positive of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think there's a, a potential that if we're not going to be able to socialize going forward, mm -hmm. like we're, we have in the past, that that could be a real possibility and mm -hmm. then that's going to really do us harm. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> or at the very least, you know, we'll, we'll have limitations into how many people are allowed into a space. And I, and I hope that we, I hope that we figured that out sooner than later. You know, because I just, I can't imagine a world where we're always looking through a screen. I just, I just don't, I don't want to. So. No, I don't want to live that way either. <laughs> and, and, you know, I think probably at some point down the road, they'll get it figured out. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm advocating is that at some point, very, very soon, we make epidemiology part of the defense budget. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it needs to be. You know, Mm -hmm. not, not leave it to independent um, grant-based firms. <laughs> right, right. So. Yeah, so, well, the, I think the last thing I want to talk about is, um, well, I mean, kind of what inspired this whole thing to begin with is, you know, uh, Water Street Studios is shifting our um, School of Art courses to the online platform, and you will be teaching one of those classes. Um, so I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that class, um, or, you know, share with the audience, um, how they can get a hold of you, your website, your, uh, you know, if you, if you're on social media at all, um, that sort of thing. So. Sure. Um, number one, yeah, I am teaching online. I've taught a number of courses mm -hmm. online over the years. I'm excited about doing it with Water Street because it will be my 
watercolor class. Okay. Um, I didn't show my watercolor. And and what's going to be so cool about it is it's going to be really close to how I actually teach face to face. Okay, great. So each week there will be a video, at least one video of instruction and demonstration, mm -hmm. um, then an assignment, and then we'll follow that up later with a Zoom meeting, okay, um, where we critique and we talk about it, and then on to the next week. So we're covering the same topics, mm -hmm. with the same demos. Mm -hmm. uh, and it might even give us more time to talk and critique than we had otherwise. Okay. So the, the advantages that maybe, you know, you didn't think about before. Okay. Yeah, I think it's going to be pretty cool. I'm looking nice. forward to it. Okay, great. Okay. Well, and finally, just how people get a hold of you. Um, I know you have a website and... Um, sure, yeah, I have, I have a number of websites. The... Okay. the Probably the main one that people can reach me through now is regionalistpainter.net. Mm -hmm. well, I do want to take a moment and thank you for this opportunity to share what I do. Absolutely. I don't know if I get the chance to do that. So that's okay. great. Great. Wonderful. All right, Kevin. Well, I hope to see you soon. Take care. Thanks. Okay. See you. ya. All right.